The titular planet of the 2010 video game Halo Reach. The planet is said to be the site of a human colony founded in 2362 CE. At 10.47 light years from the solar system, it was one of the first exoplanets colonized by humanity, and as such grew to support a population of over 703 million. Over time, it came to house the bulk of Earth's military-industrial complex, remaining the primary berth for the majority of the UNSC naval fleet up until the start of the Covenant War and the enemy bombardment of the planet's surface, which led to the complete destruction of all cities, settlements, and technological infrastructure. Reach has no native sapient species, but does possess an active biosphere that includes a number of megafauna species, such as the flightless avian-like moa and the enormous mammal-like guta. The planet is a wet terrestrial, having a surface water coverage of around 50%. It has a radius 20% larger than Earth's and possesses a mass 55% greater giving it a mean density of 4.97 grams per cubic centimeter and only a slightly stronger surface gravity of 1.08 g. Reach's atmosphere is reported to have been unbreathable to humans prior to the establishment of the first colony and subsequent terraformation of the planet, which altered its atmospheric properties to more closely match those of Earth. But given that so much of the planet's biosphere clearly survived the atmospheric changes, it is reasonable to conclude that Reach's original atmosphere wasn't too dissimilar to start with. If the planet possesses a geomagnetic field, it is not strong enough to fully repel the star's stellar winds, which are around 30 times stronger than those of our Sun. This results in charged particles from the star interacting with the planet's atmosphere in generating planet-wide aurorae. Due to this, it is possible that Reach suffers from atmospheric erosion that could eventually lead to the failure of the planet's habitability. The surface of Reach is covered in numerous impact craters, with several gigantic impact basins visible from orbit, suggesting that the planet underwent a period of heavy cometary bombardment in its recent geological history. It is unclear whether this period has ended or is still ongoing. Reach has two moons. The innermost satellite is named Tarul and is a semispherical minor moon that is believed to have been captured into orbit of the planet around 70 to 80,000 years ago. The outermost satellite is named Sotazarvis and is a major moon of considerable mass, having both a significant atmosphere and a ring system. This suggests that its mass ratio with reach is quite small and that the two objects might be better classified as a double planet system. However, due to the way double planets are hypothesized to form, both Reach and Sotazarvis should be tightly locked to one another, yet Sotazarvis appears to possess a high obliquity and independent rotation, based on the swirl patterns within its atmosphere. This runs contrary to all current planetary formation models, making it unclear how it could have formed and evolved to the state it is depicted to be in. Unfortunately, no astrophysical or orbital data exist for either of Reach's moons. Reach is reported to be the second planet of seven in the Epsilon Iridani system and orbits its orange parent star at a distance of approximately 1.06 astronomical units, with a period of 438.75 days, or 390 local days, given the planet's 27-hour synodic rotation period. In reality, the planetary system includes a large debris disk spanning from 4 to 20 astronomical units from the star, as well as an extensive Kuiper belt lying at around 70 AU. One exoplanet is known to exist in the system. Known as Epsilon Iridani b, or Egir, it is a Jovian planet of approximately 207 Earth masses, orbiting at 3.5 AU with a period of about 7.6 years. The star Epsilon Iridani is a spectral type K2 main sequence orange dwarf, with 82% the mass of our Sun and 32% its luminosity. Epsilon Iridani and its system of planets are quite young, having an estimated age between 400 million and 800 million years. So how realistic is the planet Reach? Reach's surface gravity and mean density are well within the realistic range for a terrestrial planet of its size. 
Its mean density, which is about 10% lower than Earth's, implies a comparatively smaller metallic core, which could lead to it possessing a weaker geomagnetic field and provide even more explanation for its high aurora activity. The presence of geologically recent impact craters on the planet's surface also makes a lot of sense given the existence of a large debris disk in the outer system and the presence of a Jovian planet near its inner edge, the gravity of which is very likely to kick objects into the inner solar system for millions of years to come. Overall, the planet is very well built. Plus one point. Almost no data exists for Reach's orbit aside from its period. However, knowing this and the mass of the star it orbits makes it possible to calculate its average orbital distance. The problem is this distance places it outside of the system's habitable zone, resulting in it receiving less than 29% of the energy that Earth receives from the Sun. Given that Reach is supposed to be a human habitable planet similar to Earth, its orbital distance is clearly an error and should orbit much closer to the star. Negative one point. Virtually no data exists for the planet's atmosphere nor climate. Obviously, its atmosphere is breathable to humans, so that gives us some idea as to its composition and nitrogen-oxygen ratio, but this is far too little information on which to base a scientific analysis. At least one source, Halo The Essential Visual Guide, published in 2011, states that Reach's temperature varies between negative 26 and 42 degrees Celsius. However, it is unclear whether this represents its average diurnal range or the maximum temperature extremes found on the planet. I've already faulted Reach for lying outside the habitable zone of its star and thus being incapable of having the climate that it is shown to have, so here I'll just fault it for having no real climate or atmospheric data. Zero points. Reach having one major moon and one minor moon is itself fairly realistic. However, the depiction of those moons are problematic. Due to its captured origin, it is very unlikely that Tarul would be the innermost satellite. Capture events result in a moon initially possessing a highly eccentric orbit with a distant apogee, so it is unclear how Tarul could end up in a stable orbit as the innermost moon through natural processes. The outermost moon, Sardis Arvis, is even more peculiar. Unless its mass is a significant fraction of that of Reach, it is unlikely that it could maintain an atmosphere so close to the system's habitable zone. And then there are its rings. Rings around moons are an unlikely and problematic notion, even when they are aligned with the moon's orbital plane. But positive obliquity rings, like what Sotos Arvis possesses, are even more precarious. Whereas it is easy to imagine these rings continually circling the moon's oddly tilted equator as it orbits reach, in reality that's not how it would work. A ring system is not a solid object that can become tightly locked. Rather, it is a collection of trillions of discrete particles following their own individual orbital paths. As Sotos Arvis orbits reach, its equator is constantly changing its angle, but the rings would not, causing them to precess around the moon as it orbits. As this happens, gravity from the moon's asymmetrical shape and the tidal forces exerted by reach would gradually twist and warp the rings until finally tearing them apart within only a few dozen orbits. Reach certainly has a very unique and memorable satellite system, but only at the expense of its realism. Negative one point. Epsilon Iridani is a good star to place a science fiction planet around. In fact, scientists consider its potential for extraterrestrial life to be so high that it has been the subject of several radio surveys over the past 40 years looking for alien signals, and astronomers continue to search for exoplanets within its system. I feel that its young age makes it unlikely to host an evolved world like Reach, but it could be possible. So, plus one point. With a total of zero points, the planet Reach from Halo receives an E grade, which means that, for the authors of Halo, their Reach, quite literally, exceeded their grasp of astronomy. Thank you for joining me on this planetary exploration. From here, I'll be engaging my slipspace drive toward yet another alien world, and I hope you will join me there. Commander Aldridge, out.